I took over Involve five years ago. It was like being a little boy in a sweet shop. It was, it was amazing to be given such an organisation, to be given such a privilege. And um, I'd like to up front just acknowledge Richard, who started Richard and the trustees, but particularly Richard, because Involve is Richard's baby, and he started something absolutely amazing. Something that within five years, with an incredibly young staff, had made an incredible impact on the world. Um, produced publications that were making people think differently. And then he handed it over to somebody else. And for an entrepreneur, uh, an innovator, to hand something on is really quite unique. I hate qualifying unique, sorry. Um, but, it's, but you very rarely find an innovator like that. So Richard, thank you very much. I'm enjoying playing with your toy. Um, and I hope I'm playing with it in a way that you would like. So, um, and what Involve gave me the chance to do was to ask the questions about the world that I've been asking for the whole of my professional life, which were questions about how do you give power to citizens? How do you take power away from individuals and institutions that are distant from the citizens, but yet affecting the lives of those citizens, often in quite um, intense ways? And the model of democracy that delegates authority to people like Stella is broken. It's because None of us, even if we're card-carrying party members, don't agree with the whole manifesto. And the world changes over five years, and government is doing things and asked to do things that it wasn't asked to do when we voted for them in the first place. The model of representative democracy is absolutely broken. And the way that government takes decisions is totally different to the, wa the warp and weave of the way that citizens live their lives. The taking the children, I'm talking now as a father, taking the children to school, looking after your sick relatives. Th those happen on schedules that are totally different to the media schedule, the parliamentary schedule. The way that government what thinks about the world is totally different to the way that citizens think about the world. And, and yet, government operates in ways that makes it all but impossible for, for citizens to have their voices heard outside the electoral cycle. Because it makes policy in chunks that makes sense for government, that kind of a spread along Whitehall in those departmental boundaries. But they make no sense to the way that citizens live their lives. When they think about education, they think about the road that gets them there as much as they think about whether their child is getting a good education or not. And those departments are unable to relate to those bigger strategic decisions in ways that make sense either to government or to citizens, actually. And the, but the bursts of policy making it happen at such speed because media and parliament and government pushes our policy makers to think so fast that there is actually no time to hear citizens' voices properly. And when it does happen, it happens often last minute. And all that means is a limited possibility for citizens, for citizens to make a difference, to actually make their voices heard within policy making. And then it all happens kind of once, and then government moves on to the next thing. So it means that although I continue to take my child to school, government is now, from my perspective, on to the next thing. Um, and and then, so therefore, citizens aren't able to engage at the time that makes sense for them. There's lots of people I'm working with inside government here. I can see them. I'm quite not catching their eye at the moment because this isn't, this isn't a criticism of those individuals at all. This is a comment on the system. The pressures that those people are under um, are, are intense. Um, and it's not about them. And it's not about anybody in government. It's about the way we organize government. But the, so that's the problem. So what's my vision? Let's be clear, although I think that representative democracy is broken, I am not proposing handing decisions back to citizens. Because we do need the ultimate sanction, if you'll excuse my English, of voting the bastards out. We do need to know who's in power and be able to get rid of them. So we do need parliament, we do need ministers, we do need local councillors, because in the end we need people who we have given the authority to take decisions, and we need to be able to get rid of them. But we also need a democratic system where structures and processes of public engagement are open and transparent. So we know who is making the decision, who has been involved in it, on what basis are they making the decision, on what evidence, when and how are they doing it. We need systems that are persistent, not these one-off bursts of policy making where the public can engage and then get kicked out again, but things that are persistent so the public can come to it when they're ready to come to it that are strategic, that are no longer about subclause 3 of Bill X in Parliament, but are actually about energy infrastructure, health, our ageing society, things that the public thinks about rather than kind of the way that Whitehall and, and departments and other bits of government chunk it up. 
and they need to have real power and real bite within the system. We need to not only be able to vote people out if we disagree with them, but actually be able to hold other people to account. And then I will look at some of the people who we need to be able to hold you to account in ways that make sense to citizens. But for that to happen, and I think this is where many people in, in the public engagement arena get it wrong, for that to happen, it's got to make sense for government as much as it makes sense for citizens. Because government operates, the way that government operates is for a reason. It's because we need to understand where the money is going, who is accountable. We need the media to operate so we can have the information. So the way government operates is for a reason, but citizens' lives are totally different. And if we're going to, my vision of democracy is how we marry those two things together. Citizens' lives to the way that government has to operate. And in the last minute, I'm going to describe to you the, the biggest democratic experiment I've ever been involved in, ever had the privilege to involve, be involved in. We're working with a number of organisations, Democratic Society who are here tonight, Tavistock Institute and Public Eye and NHS England who are also here tonight, um, to develop a new democratic space to hold the board of NHS England to account. Now, normally the way these things are done is uh, a, a large consultancy will be sent to a darkened room for six months and told to come up with the perfect system. And the system would be perfect, in the ideal it would be perfect, but in reality it wouldn't work with citizens' lives and it wouldn't have the political legitimacy to actually work in practice. And so what we've been asked to do is to design a, an assembly to hold the board of NHS system, to hold the board of NHS England publicly to account, and we're designing that system in public. We've put the whole host of questions that we've got about how it might work open online. We're streaming all of the workshops we're having. We were in Sunderland last week, and we had a, a project wrap up after the workshop, and we live streamed that workshop, that that, that wrap up. I felt intensely uncomfortable doing that. It was really, and doing, the work, doing this work in a different way may, will make everybody feel very uncomfortable. It will make you feel exposed. But I also feel liberated. I don't have to claim I've got all the right answers. I'm one person with an Oxbridge background. I cannot possibly have all the answers for the whole of British, of, of British society. We need to involve everybody in these sorts of decisions. And the system itself is trying to do the connection of how government thinks about the world to how citizens think about the world. I'm not going to describe that system to you. Go onto our website and find it. I think it's fantastic. So this feels like a revolution, the NHS citizen work and the work we're thinking about in terms of with the Cabinet Office and the Open Government and so on. And I feel like I'm surfing an enormous wave. I feel like I've got it under control. I'm doing some fantastic tricks, but I also feel it's a massive wave and I could get dumped at any moment. But I'm doing it in public and people can see what I'm trying to do and I hope they will believe that my intentions and our intentions, all of our intentions, is not me at all. It is all of us are, are, are real and sincere. So, and I'm able to do all of this surfing, as it were, because I've got 10 years of solid experience behind us. I have an absolutely fantastic staff, all of whom are here, and a number of former staff members too, and an incredibly supportive base of trustees, both current and indeed past. So for government to work, for citizens, it must open up and it must make it easy for citizens to engage when they want to, in ways that they want to. But it isn't inevitable this will happen. We may think that with Twitter and open data and all these things that this isn't just inevitable, it will happen anyway. It isn't inevitable. Um, because it's equally possible to plot a course where different political parties get in who close everything down and, 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 and are unable to take the risks that need to, be, need to happen. We have to help them make the risks. So if we're successful to steal the, the line for, for Gil Scott Heron's fantastic line, the revolution will be televised, it will be live streamed, it will be tweeted, it blogged and tumbled. But it will only happen if organisations like Involve can straddle government and the wider world, straddle civil society and citizens, and create spaces where citizens, government and civil society can have a conversation that is safe about their vision for a better world. So thank you all very much. Thank you.